What microscope should you get for your kids? Well, my biggest recommendation is that you either get a smartphone microscope, a digital microscope, or a stereo microscope. I do not recommend that you get a compound biological microscope. You know, the kind that has the multiple objectives that you can flip down. The biggest problem with these is that the, the magnification is just too high, and it's very fickle to get the samples to actually work on these things. You need a glass slide, a cover slip, all of that stuff, which kids are going to have a really hard time doing, especially the younger kids. If you have you know, a teenager, they can absolutely use one of these. Or if you really want a microscope that can do a specific sample that requires a compound biological microscope, such as like blood samples, cells, tissues, bacteria, that kind of stuff, you are going to fundamentally need one of these. Otherwise, the really high magnifications make it so that the entire process of doing microscopy is really complicated and it's gonna be hard for kids to do that. So I'm just gonna get it out of here so you don't even, you don't even have to think about it. And then we have this one here. This is a, a kid's microscope. This is marketed on Amazon, 20 bucks, made for kids. And I gotta say, it's basically unusable. It is just not very good um, to the point where it's so hard to use even as an adult to get a good sample on it. I can't imagine that kids are really gonna be able to use it. And the real, the fundamental problem here is again that it's it's too high of a magnification. They're trying to make it work on a cheap device. Like the higher magnifications you get, the more sophistication is required for the setup, and they're trying to pack that into a, a really cheap plastic unit. So I would I would forget about something like this. I wouldn't even bother bother with it. I think you're going to have a better time getting like a good magnifying glass at that point. But you can definitely do better than that. And I think that's where. The, the smartphone microscopes come in. I really love these things because they're super versatile, they're super easy to use, and kids can definitely use this thing. The downside is that you have to use it with a phone of some sort, or you can do, do an iPad as well. This is the one that we carry. We've tested a bunch of smartphone microscopes, and this is one we like the most. Really simple to use. You just put it over your camera, boom, like that. You can see on my phone, pinch to zoom there, and then already you just put it up to whatever surface you're looking at. In this case, I'm looking at my fingerprint and it just instantly works, it looks great. Next onto the digital microscopes, we have a couple of different kinds here. We have the Anonstar portable microscope here, which I had to grab a battery bank for, unfortunately this was out of battery. And then we also have this other Anonstar that's just a, a static unit on a stand. So what your kids are gonna be using this for is to look at surface textures, go find insects to look at, be looking at skin, other things like that. The really important detail here is that digital microscopes are just really easy to use. The fact that you have a screen to look at makes, thing, makes things so much easier. When you have to actually physically look through uh, like eyepieces, it makes it so that you, you need proper optical alignment between the distance of your eyes to the eyepieces. And I've just ended up finding that when kids use my microscopes, they just a lot of the time struggle with different eyepiece sets. On these stereo microscopes, it's not as bad, which we'll get into um, for some optical reasons. But in any case, as a general rule of thumb, screens are gonna be so much easier for people that are not quite as capable as adults are to be able to use. So just showing you this little portable microscope here right now, turn it on. Gives you a nice little chime and a welcome message, hello, to your, to your microscope. And then you can just put whatever under it. And there you go, you can go send this off to your kids, they can go into the woods, they can look at stuff. The biggest, the biggest challenge that I have with this microscope and this portable microscope is that because it's handheld, the distances that an object is actually in focus at mean that you have to hold this extremely still and even just the small amount of hand jitters that you have and that all humans are gonna have, make it so that the object is going in and out of focus pretty regularly. And that's why, you know, for like a compound biological microscope, everything is extremely rigid and metal because at those high magnifications, the depth of field is even smaller. So the same thing applies here, but we're a little bit less magnified. And so the problem's not as bad, but it's still, it's still there. And so that's where having a microscope on a stand comes in, a digital microscope on a stand because now you can just put an object under here. I don't know, you put a $20 bill under there, you move the dollar bill, you don't move the microscope, and that works really, really well. Um, that being said, the, the, the portable aspect of it, fantastic. Go send your kids off to the woods, they're gonna have a good time. Uh, alternatively, you can actually just put this, this comes with a stand, depending on which model you get. The, the kind that we carry typically comes, comes with a stand, so that's what I recommend on that. These are getting a little bit pricier up in this range, so this is, I believe, 
80, 90, 100 dollars, 120, somewhere in that in that range. And then this one is around the 250 dollar range. You know, something like a smartphone microscope is going to be like 20 bucks. So big big difference. Um, if, I mean, if they have an iPad to use, if they have a phone that they can use, I mean, the amount of value that kids I've seen get out of just a smartphone microscope is pretty immense. In selling our Micro Safari kit, I hear tons of parents saying that the kit is awesome, the kids love it, but really the thing that they go crazy for is just the smartphone microscope. Um, by the way, this is basically a giant microscope slide filled with live soil organisms, um, so you can have your own little uh, universe of creatures that you can feed them and take care of them and all that stuff. And this is actually the new version that we're coming out with, the fill it yourself version, so that you can take this little funnel here, take the funnel, put it on the top of this, and then take, this would come as a blank cartridge, and then you can fill it up with your own soils in your own backyard, explore the different organisms, the ecosystem, stuff like this. This works with actually all of the microscopes that I've shown thus far. Um, <laughs> This will work just fine on it. It just requires a reflected light illumination source, but uh, kids love this thing. Uh, check it out. And then finally, we have the stereo microscopes. Kids like these things a lot. I have found that they don't actually, they don't struggle that much to get their, their eyes and the little peepers, primarily because if you look at the, the eyepieces on this, the actual hole that you look into, the piece of glass, the lens you look into, is, is rather large. These are wide field eyepieces, which makes it much easier to center your eyes over the eyepieces, and it doesn't require quite as much precision of you know, the interpupillary distance, and it doesn't require you to be just over it, and all of that stuff. These are both reflected light microscopes, and that makes it so that they work on a very wide range of samples and is a lot easier to set up and use. This microscope here, model that you're gonna get, gonna be somewhere in the 100 to 200 dollar range for the feature set. And then this you know, huge chunky thing over here is in the kind of like 600 dollar range. Uh, my business partner's kid loves using this thing. <laughs> um, he, he's actually gotten quite good at using it. Um, I don't expect that you're gonna buy a $600 crazy microscope for your kid, but if you're buying this for both yourself and your kid, I highly recommend getting a stereo microscope. It is really cool and unique to see three-dimensional objects under a microscope, which is what the binocular vision gives you when looking at stuff. My second piece of advice is to not fret over magnification levels. I do not recommend getting a high magnification for kids. People are rather surprised at how far you can get with a small amount of magnification. The smartphone microscope has about 30 times magnification, and that lets you see the sweat pores on my fingerprint. Um, this, this one, this Anonstar portable one, I think can go around that plus up to about 90. I would say that this Anonstar uh, stand microscope can do the same thing, and then these two are less than that. I think this one's 20 to 40, and then this one goes up to, I believe, 60 on that one. But yeah, so much cool stuff that you can see at just those small magnifications. Piece of advice number three is don't put too much weight on brand names for microscopes. Whether it's Amscope, Euromax, Swift, the, the dirty secret is that they're all just buying these microscopes from the same suppliers from China, at least at this kind of a price range. You know, they, they do have huge catalogs, so some, I could be incorrect, but the, the most popular sellers I know are the same as the ones that even we're sourcing from our suppliers. So don't worry about it. Just, I would say, worry more about the kind of big picture feature sets that you get out of the microscopes. If something looks too cheap to be true and to be good, then it probably is. And from what I've seen exploring kind of the, the microscope market, generally, I don't see a lot of like ripoff companies that will sell way overpriced stuff. I would say it's pretty competitive for what, for what you're getting at least for like the most popular brands. Piece of advice number four is to think about what samples your kids are gonna use just as much as the microscopes that you get. Kids love looking at moving things. <laughs> if I've learned anything in my time building exhibits for children's museums, specifically microscope museum exhibits, kids go crazy over anything that moves. So looking at, at bugs or microorganisms, um, stuff from ponds, is okay, not as, not as great though as just even looking at insects because it's just harder to prepare those samples. Um, so that's where something like the Micro Safari kit comes in or just like get a Petri dish, throw a bug in the Petri dish and put it under one of these things. Um, and again, coming back to why stereo microscopes and digital microscopes are easy for, easier for kids to use than a compound biological microscope, let me go grab that, is because there's just not a lot of room under here to be able to put like a bug or a beetle or something um, the, the working distance between the bottom of the objective and where your sample has to be is really small on these kind of microscopes. And it's by design because it gives you higher resolution images when you do it like that, but it makes the sample prep way harder. 
And so for kids, I would just say, forget about it. For teenagers, they could use both of these microscopes. By the way, these microscopes, these two right here, are the Horizons microscopes, the Horizons Light, and our full-size Horizons microscope that we sell in a kit for other things. If you have a teenager that's looking for a microscope, definitely consider these. I would not get them for, for littler kids, though. You can also try putting bugs inside of like a Tupperware container. It just, the, I guess the challenge is that you need something that has a really clear top part. And so I would try and effectively emulate what we've done on this uh, Microsphere Terra here, where it's like a kind of flat plane and then you put stuff inside of it. So I think like a Petri dish would work great. You can probably have Tupperware that you put some saran wrap over the top and it'll look fine, but the top surface needs to be optically clear and you can see through it easily. Kids are also going to like textures, they're going to like looking at money and coins and plant specimens, that kind of stuff. Mostly things that they, they find and that they're, they're curious about. I would say what kids definitely don't really get that much entertainment out of are those static sample slides, those glass slides that just have like a tiny slice of a plant stem or something. I mean, they're very cool, especially for adults to be looking at, but for kids, I mean, a little moving bug that has like crazy little wacky little antenna or something, they're going to love that way more. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Hit that subscribe button, please. And uh, if you like our work, check out microsafari.org.